because of who you are because of who you are I give you glory because of who you are because of who you are I give you praise because of who you are because of who you are I will lift my voice and say Lord I worship you because of who you are hey, hey Lord I worship you because of who you are take it one more time pick up a little bit because of who you are because of who you are I give you glory I'm going to sing to the Lord. Oh, because of who you are, because of who you are, I give you praise. Lord, it's because of who you are, I will live my voice. Because of who you are, I tell them, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah, my provider, my provider, Jehovah Nisi, Lord, you reign, yes, you do. Lord, I worship you, Lord, I worship you, because of who you are. Jehovah Jireh, I'm going to sing it one more time, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, yeah, Jehovah Nisi, yes, you are Jehovah Nisi. Lord, you reign, Lord, you reign, Lord, you reign. Hey, Jehovah Shiloh, my Prince of Peace, yes, you are my Prince of Peace. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Oh, Lord, I worship you. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Hallelujah. God, we give you praise. Come on and sing to the Lord. We love you, yes, we do. Come on, open your mouth and sing. We love you, yes, we do. We give you glory, yes, we do. We give you praise, we love you. Come on, we love you, we love you. Lord, we love you, we love you. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, please go with me to 1 Samuel chapter 17, starting at verse 33 the sweet spirit in this place it must be the presence of the Lord first Samuel chapter 17 verse 33 first Samuel yes sir deacon first Samuel chapter 17 verse 33 we're continuing our teaching on level up someone say level up 
I want to say good morning to all of our viewers on Black Men Empowered. We thank God for you. Thank God to Dr. Jacqueline King and Dr. Oscar Underwood. We thank God for you and for all of those that's watching. Welcome to the Mount. Then we have a good time on Friday night. For a real talk Friday. We had some real talk about being single, about single parenting. We had the Jennings talk about 57 years of marriage. It was amazing. Absolutely amazing. Amen. You're in First Samuel chapter 17. Verse 33. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. And Saul said to David, you are not able to go against the Philistines to fight with them. For you are a youth. And he is a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from his mouth. And when it arose against me, I fought, I caught it by his beard and struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hands of the Philistines. Someone needs to say, He will deliver me. Hallelujah. Come on, say it again. He will deliver. And Saul said to David, Go and the Lord be with you. So Saul clothed David with his armor. And he put on a brass helmet on his head, and he also clothed him with a coat of mail. David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk, for he had not tested them. Say, test it. Yes. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I have not tested them. So David took them off. So far the text. Let us pray. Our Father and our God. Bless this simple witness, charge it with your power. To where people may be healed, delivered, and set free. I thank you for the breaker's anointing that's already been released in this app. We thank you, Lord, that there will be no bondage on this word, but the people shall hear the word and be doers thereof. Now, God, I yield to you everything I have. Use me as a vessel of honor. Take my intellect, studies, experiences, passions, and struggles. And let this word be clear, relevant, and powerful. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This morning I want to talk about don't use what hasn't been tested. Don't use what hasn't been tested. Why don't you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't use what hasn't been tested. In this month, we're talking about leveling up, going to the next level in your life. How many of you know that you're right on the edge of going to the next level in your career, in your finances, in your health, in your relationships? And a part of preparing for the next level is really paying attention to where you are now. The current level where you are now is giving you not only clues about the next level, but it's giving you training and experience that you will need to help you to transition to the next level. And a lot of times when God is processing us, it's not enjoyable. It can be rather painful at times when he's processing us. But if we would get past the discomfort of the testing, if we can get past the discomfort of the opposition and begin to say, Lord, what are you saying to me about this? We will gain valuable tools and experiences that will help us to fight. But I, I'm afraid that we have really raised a generation in the church who feels like because we're saved and love the Lord, everything's supposed to always be good. But how many of you know that everything is not always going to be good? There's going to be tough days. There's going to be times where you have trusted God, you have done everything you know to do, everything they told you to do, and it still don't work. What do you do in those days when you have done everything and you are still in a bad situation? Sometimes God causes us to stay in those tough places to really show us where our faith is. Mature faith says this, that if he doesn't and even if he doesn't do it, 
I'm still going to praise him. I'm like the boys in the fiery furnace. Even if he doesn't deliver us out of the fire, he is still well able. Oh, I wish I had some help. If he doesn't or if he doesn't do it, it's still not going to change my confession that the Lord is able to do whatever. And if he don't take me out the fire, that means that he had a greater purpose and I can lift my hands and say to God be the glory. Great things he can do. If you can only declare that when he does what you want, you don't have a God, you have a genie. And God is nobody's genie. You can't rub him and make him do what you want. There's some things he's going to tell you no. And if you can stand and say, I'll trust you. God, if you give me the grace to go through, I'll go through. If you give me the strength to hold on, God, I will hold on. So, so because many of us have the mentality that we're not supposed to go through anything and that everything is going to always be good, we begin to rebuke the experiences that God is sending to us to prepare us. We begin to call training the devil when it's God giving you tools. How many of us have begun to complain about our boss man being on our back? Begin to complain because people are talking about you. Begin to complain about things not going right. Begin to complain because your money is a little bit funny and you're strange. Your change a little strange. Not realizing that God is using all of this, Mother Hutchinson. He's using all of this, Mother Blake, to give you tools. Now, let me ask you a question. There are some things you didn't know that you could do until you got in trouble. You didn't know how creative you was. I wish I had 50 people to help me. You didn't know how creative you was. You didn't know how strong you were. You didn't know how much you could endure until you got in difficult times and the obvious wasn't so obvious and you had to lean into God and ask him for insight and he says you already have it, it's inside of you. Oh come on, can I talk to some people who have more mouths and food to feed and God showed you how to take this and put this with this and oh I wish I had some help to stretch out some meals. Tell you how to rob Mary to pay Peter, come on up in here. You know you have more bills than money, but God said pay a little bit right here. Call them and move it to next week. Do it. Come on here. Go under the mattress. You put a little hundred under the mattress. You pull it out. Put, come on here. You didn't know you knew how to do it until you got put in trouble. So trouble doesn't come to hurt us when we're destined. Tell somebody I'm destined. Come on, say it. Put your hand on yourself. I'm destined. What are you destined for? I'm destined for greatness. I'm destined for the purpose that God has for me. And because I'm destined for greatness and I'm destined for purpose, nothing is by accident. Even trouble, even difficulty, it's been orchestrated and ordained by God to give us tools that we need to move. We always think it's to go to the next level or for the next level, but a lot of times the tools are for that transition period. It is the tools you've gained in the struggle that qualify you to level up. Let me say that again. It is the tools you gain in the struggle that qualifies you to level up. Because without the struggle, without the experience, you would not qualify to level up. What am I talking about? We're, we're talking about David. Who was a shepherd boy. He was the eighth of, uh, eight of all these boys. Overlooked by his father. Put on the backside of the desert. To take care of sheep. In those days taking care of sheep was considered to be one of the lowest things you could do. You're at the bottom of the totem pole. When you take care of sheep. But that's where David was put. Can I talk to some people who feel like you've been at the bottom all your life? feel like you've been on the backside of the desert all your life forgotten about rejected and abandoned wonder why you had to grow up here and why you had to struggle with this can i tell you that god specializes in taking the bottom taking the least taking the marginalized and raising them up to do something amazing so don't let your past feels like you're not qualified 
Because your selection by God qualifies you. Oh, that's so good. Your selection by God qualifies you. And whatever you don't have, God will make up the difference by the anointing. Can I tell you, never forget this. The anointing makes you equal to the task. You should write that down. I said the anointing makes you equal to the task. Come in, Minister Rucker. Hold this mic for a minute. I don't want to wear my head mic because I don't know what saying it. If this is the task and this is where you are, when God anoints you, it brings you up. Oh, y'all not getting it. Y'all just sitting there looking like you had a lecture. I say, if this is the task and this is where you are, because isn't this where we are most of the time? What God has called us to do, we're nowhere close to that in the natural. That's why he gives us supernatural enablement called the anointing. Whatever he calls you to, there is a matching anointing for the position. And when that anointing gets on your life, it raises you up to the level so that now you're equal to the task that God has called you to do. I want to talk to 50 people, thank you, who feel like you're not qualified, who feel like you can't do it. All you need is the anointing because when the anointing gets on your life, it will bring you up to the task. I wish you open your mouth and praise God for the anointing. It's bigger than a position. It's bigger than a title. It's bigger than being important. I want the anointing because I know I'm not able to do it on my own. But if I get the anointing on my life, and let me tell you how the anointing comes. The anointing comes from struggle and suffering and crying and pressing your way and pushing your way. You don't get the anointing without struggle. I wish I had 75 people to open up their mouth right now and thank God for the struggle. Thank God for the pain. Thank God for the disappointments because it's produced the anointing. Hey, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. When you realize that the suffering wasn't to hurt you, but to press the oil out of you. When the olives is getting ready to be made oil, you have to stomp on them. You got to shake it. Huh? You got to beat it to get the oil out. And that's why you've been going through. To position you for the oil. To position you for the anointing. But not just to position you for the anointing. Sit down, we're just talking. Not just to position you for the anointing but to build up your resume sister Stephanie won't God build up your resume Alicia what am I talking about so David's on the back side of the desert we don't know much about what's happening but in our test today we get some insight into what's happening to the life of David while he's on the back side of the desert so now the Philistines who's the ancient enemy of Israel don't get upset because you have the same enemy showing up over and over again Sometimes we get disappointed and we get aggravated because it's the same fools, the same mess, the same drama keeps showing back up. And you're like, what did I do to keep bringing this? No, it's a distraction. Tell your neighbor, it's a distraction. Ignore them Kushites. Ignore your boss. Ignore the gossiping people. Ignore people who don't treat you right. They are distractions. And so Philistines came up against Israel and they brought something different this time. They brought out a giant named Goliath. Goliath is standing in the valley of Gath. He's saying, bring me somebody out to fight. Bring me somebody out able to fight me. This man was nine feet tall. Now, I'm 6'4". That's like another three feet taller than me, Sean. That's a big man. And in those days, the people were not as tall as we are. So this man was larger than life. Standing in the valley saying, send me somebody to fight Nobody would fight. Meanwhile, back at Jesse's house, David's daddy, he says, okay, three of the boys went out to fight in the army. David, I need you to come, and I need you to go check on your brothers. Now, mind you, right before this, David had been anointed to be king, which means that God anointed him before he was to face a task to take him to the next level. I want to tell you that a sign that you're getting ready to level up is when you get a new anointing you was not expecting. Y'all don't want to help me this morning. I said a sign that you're getting ready to level up is that you're going to get a fresh new anointing you were not expecting. 
God doesn't just anoint us to say I'm anointed. God anoints us to do work. Write that down. God anoints us to do work. God anoints us to do work. You're not anointed just to sit around and brag. You are anointed to do something. And a lot of times the anointing will precede the assignment. It will come before the assignment. And so David was anointed for king. But before he can get to the throne, there were some levels he had to pass through. One of the levels is that he had to fight against the giant. He did not know that he would face a giant. He was simply obeying his father. I said it last week, but I got to say it again. Just because you are anointed does not mean that you do not serve. Just because you're anointed does not mean you get to disobey. If anything, when you get anointed, you should be extra sensitive to the voice of the Father. And whatever he's telling you to do, you may want to obey. Because you don't know where he may be sending you to. And what this moment and opportunity may do to get you to the next level. If there's a time not to be disobedient, it's not after you've been anointed. Hear me. The time not to throw your notes. Well, I'm, I can't do that. I'm in this position. I have this title. I'm beyond that. Nothing is beyond you when you've been called. Oh, come on. Talk to me up in here. I don't care what your title is. If you've been called to serve, get busy serving. Because you don't know what your service will lead you to. Now, David could say, well, I've been anointed to be king. And not only was David anointed to be king, but Saul had sent for him to be his armor bearer. So David moving on up to the east side. And a deluxe tent by the king. He doing it. But his dad said, come here. And he went. God says, don't let nothing, your position, your title, money, connection, don't let anything cause you to miss what God is doing because you cannot obey his voice. He goes, he obeys his father. I'm going to go down and feed my brothers, not knowing that he's going to walk into a moment that's going to change his whole life. Amen. He gets down there and he hears this giant in the valley defying the armies of the Lord, cursing God, threatening them. And all these men were hiding and shaking. Even the king was scared. But this boy walked down there, he wasn't least bit moved. <laughs> How could David not be moved when trained army men were scared? Because David learned something in his process that if God be for you. Oh, I got some witnesses up here. I said, if God be for you. I don't care how many guns you got. I don't care how much armor you got. I don't care how big you are. My God is bigger than any and everything you can ever have. See, it's in those processes of difficulty and struggle that you begin to learn God at a deeper level. See, if he don't process you, you won't know him. And if you don't know him, then you'll walk into opportunities and be intimidated by the opportunities because you forget.